All right. So a couple things. I reached out to one of the utilization management nurses, and I also got on your certificate of coverage just to find that one documented area. And where it is is under the first section, uh, under number 12, infertility services. Hmm. And then right before donor expenses. And it says, and it's, and I, you're going to say it's, it's open for interpretation, which it is, but I'm going to share one other thing with you. Right where it says benefits are provided for procedures for in vitro fertilization, gamete, intrafallopian tube transfer, or zygote, mm -hmm. intrafallopian archive. So under there, then it says the covered person has been unable to attain, maintain, or sustain a preg successful pregnancy through reasonable, less costly infertility covered under this policy. And then the second part of it is the procedures are performed at facilities conforming to the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists guidelines for infertility clinics or to the American Fertility Society minimal standards for programs of in vitro fertilization. So that refers to the clinical guidelines. And then the one thing that I just found out, which I, I wasn't aware of, is that the in-network providers have access to the specific clinical guidelines. And in the clinical guideline, it specifically says that there's no, that that's one of the exclusions is banking embryos. And where would I find this clinical guideline though? You know what, and I definitely, I'm not exactly sure because, you know, clinical guidelines can be amended, but you're, just so you know, your doctor has it. And the unfortunate piece mm -hmm. is if they had looked at that and identified that that was not a covered benefit, that would be one clue to them. Yeah, but my doctor doesn't have my biggest certificate part, of coverage, though, part, so how would biggest, they even know to look there? part of this that is really, they did not submit. Now, you had started medications. What date? Uh, they didn't submit the first of all those till the 31st which is really a shame that they did that because you had already started your medications. So, you know, I would definitely, if I were you, go back to them and ask why your prior authorization wasn't requested prior to starting medications and in place. Well, I know why he didn't, because he thought the other one was still in place. That's what he told me. So. And, and that's, that's, is this the physician telling you or the billing office? That's the, the physician. physician. He doesn't have a billing office. This is him. I deal with him every time I, sit, I go in there. Okay. Um, because each procedure requires its own prior authorization. So who puts them through there? I can't imagine it's the physician doing everything, or does he? Um, I mean, it's a very small clinic. It's him, his mm -hmm. nurse, mm -hmm. and the receptionist. Now... I don't know who's putting things through through uh, insurance. It's probably somewhere between his receptionist and the nurse. Somewhere between okay. those two. Okay. So, you know, I would just go back to them and just say, you know, what are you going to do here in this situation? Oh, for sure. I mean, <laughs> I'm, a, go ahead. Uh, for sure. But um, yeah. I still want to see this guideline. Like, I need to... Do, my problem with this mm -hmm. is I can see my certificate of coverage. It took a while to get it um, and a lot of hoopla right. to get a hold of it. But I think, you know, when, when I make a decision to choose what health coverage I want mm -hmm. and I know I'm going to be dealing with something rather specific, like this is something that I'm going to be looking for, right? So all these little ins and outs, what's covered, what's not covered and all of that, that needs to be spelled out to me so that I, as a patient, can make decisions based on what I know of my coverage. The, pro uh, the other problem I have is even when I know I'm covered for something, I call insurance and I'm told I'm not covered when indeed I am. So I that's a, oh, oh yeah, I've been going through this since my IUIs where I was told I had no infertility coverage whatsoever and then on a whim I called about a pharmacy and was told, oh, yeah, there's a whole fertility program we can sign you up for. Well, where did this come from? You know, <laughs> when the last three people told me I had nothing at all. Yeah, so, I mean, 
so I want you to know that there is, that they follow specific guidelines, um, clinical guidelines in who, United Healthcare. You might be able to look it up on uhc.com. Clinical guidelines. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Like I don't know. <laughs> See this. This line doesn't tell me that I'm governed by these guidelines. It doesn't say that it's covered, what's covered, what's not covered. It's just saying what these certain guidelines oh, are. Guidelines. It's not saying this is a separate document. You you can you can find it here. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not referencing. It's just saying something. It's not necessarily referencing another document. You know, I don't know. This could be some broad guideline that's you know govern in general um for the united states i don't know this this isn't very clear to me and it doesn't help me make any decisions regardless of what my doctor knows or what he thinks he knows right. you know right. i he's not looking at my coverage of benefits where he can see this paragraph i am so this paragraph doesn't point me to another what i was told today is that the in-network providers have access to the clinical guidelines so that is something that would usually be utilized by practices if they had a question about coverage for a specific patient. Yeah, but he that's the thing. When I brought up the concern, he didn't have a question about coverage. He was pretty sure what would be covered versus what wouldn't. That's his mistake, right? right? Yeah, um, that's his it's mistake, and it's, know, it's bad information to me. Common, you know, United Healthcare, Blue Cross, Brazil, whatever the, the insurance is, that banking of embryos is not a covered benefit in many cases. Well, why is that? Why is that not spelled out as clearly as cryopreservation is? If that's a, such a well, standard and another, thing. And that's a, you know, again, I'm a, I'm the nurse, but I'm trying to help you through this piece. Um, I believe that it is stated in. Let me see if I can find it. The cryopreservation is definitely stated as an exclusion in the exclusion section of my to, certificate of benefits. Be but there is nothing about banking. There isn't a single word in my certificate of coverage that mentions banking. There's nothing in that um, exclusion section that references those documents again for exclusions. If I'm looking for exclusions or I'm looking for, right. you know, right. you know, if all the exclusions are in one place, like this is, by the way contracts go, like I miss those big fat books that spell out everything to the letter. Yeah, Okay, because that's what I was looking for to see what's covered, what's not covered. I don't know if I have a limit on how many cycles they're going to cover, if I have a, a lifetime dollar limit. I don't know any of this. Where is that in some sort of American guideline somewhere? No, <laughs> that's the inner certificate of coverage. It's not. It's not. None of that is. I have no idea what my limits are, if there are any. Are there any age restrictions here? That's not listed in the certificate of coverage. That's what I'm saying. There's a lot of stuff that's extremely vague here. And I'm, I'm back to, I'm looking at your coverage. It's limited to four where does, retrievals where, per year. Where does that say that? Oh. <laughs> yes, I'm looking at it. Where? It in, let me see. I'm going to go. Oh, I'm going to go to the top here. Let's see which section I'm in. What the? It's many, many, many pages, isn't it? It is under, I can get to the top of this section. It is right under United Healthcare Choice Plus, United Healthcare Insurance Company, Schedule of Benefits, Assessing Benefits, which is section. Do you know what page that is? You know what, it's just right under the glossary of where all the pages is. It's like the first section. So it's the page, it's after page, it's page one and then down. So let's see, I'll find the exact page. Let's see, I'll find the exact page for you. It is on page 12. And it says infertility services. And 
and it talks about prior authorization requirement. You must obtain prior authorization as soon as possible. And then on the left, it says benefits for assisted reproductive technology are limited to four OO site retrievals per year, so that means egg retrieval. However, if a retrieval is followed by a live birth, two additional OO site retrievals will be covered following the photo. So that's just in reference to the total coverage. Wait, I don't think my page 12 is the same as your page 12. It isn't? Let me see. I'm looking at... I mean, because I've got a 170-page document here. Okay, and this is and this is effective July 1 of 18 is the date on it that I had. July 1? Um, Why would that be effective July 1 when it should be January? I don't know. So it's is that July something that must be a new one or something that they're working on for next year? So, because uh, these this coverage would have started January 1. So for that to be effective July one, it kind of doesn't make another one like from another one that was earlier that would be any different. Let's see. I don't know what is wrong with my machine. Hmm? My machine is running incredibly slow, so I'm having trouble navigating this PDF document. Well, that's the thing. It didn't say before. <laughs> I don't know if they increased it or decreased it. they specified a limit because that they this the document I have which um, when I can get in here maybe I can see the revision date the on dollar it amount, the one that you have last year? yeah there's no dollar amount there's no age restriction there's no number of retrievals none of that is listed in this document that I can tell Again, where are these guys? You know what I'm saying? They should, like, that kind of stuff should be pointed out. You know, exclusions, look in this document. So that I at least know that I should be looking for some guidelines somewhere. Like, that should be something that I should have access to prior to even choosing the benefit. Because that could be the difference between one benefit and another, or me choosing one health plan over another.
I mean, because if I don't and they think, oh, well, patients wouldn't understand the verbiage because it's all medical speak or whatever the case may be, you know what I'm saying? That doesn't that doesn't help me as a patient trying to make uh, appropriate decisions. So let me let me ask you this. Um, let's say they deny an appeal. They don't pay for this retrieval that I just went through. So anything as a result of this retrieval should not have any bearing on my insurance going forward, yes or no? Yeah, in term, if you're having to pay out of pocket, if it's been denied, yeah, I can't put it towards your insurance. No, what I'm saying is, so, like, let's say I get embryos out of this. Um, the, the cycle they pay for, I've got one viable embryo. So, essentially, I should have to do one retrieval, bef- I mean, one transfer before they will go in for another retrieval. Or are they going to be looking for my records again for things they didn't even pay for? And say, oh, well, oh, she got it. three embryos out of the one she paid for herself, so we're still not going to pay for a retrieval, which I don't think is fair. Yeah, and again, this is not what I do, because I do not determine, you know, your coverage. I can just share with you what I can see, basically what you can see. Um, so that's one of the things that's important to know is that's why it is required to have a prior authorization before any services. So it would be my understanding if you had to pay out of pocket for this retrieval. I'm not at liberty to share any results from it. Oh, but they may. Like, are you saying, like, if you requested another retrieval? Uh, right. If I do my transfer for the embryo that came out, um, let's say this retrieval only governed one and I need a third retrieval. Okay. Right. I don't want to have to do two transfers when I paid for this one. You see what I'm saying? Like, as far as I'm concerned, insurance has no right to anything I paid out of pocket for as far as that information goes. Well, they, they do, they may request with your plan, if it is required that they request, you know, your clinical, what's been done, then they would get that from the doctor's office. Well, so, not if I don't give them a right to share it. I pay for it out of pocket. Right. So they're yeah, not at liberty to share that, that information with anyone other than myself. Have embryos there, you know, I'm, I can't guarantee that that wouldn't be an issue moving forward. <laughs> you know, I mean, you... The doctor's office said, you know, you have this embryos and you're requesting another retrieval that could be denied again. Well, I have embryos from a result of what they paid for. No, I mean, but these are things I need answers on. So, I mean, I essentially had to pay for this under duress, okay? And, um, you know, if I wasn't stemming or, or whatever, I mean, it's a different situation if I knew this up front. But also what I would want to know up front is do I need to wait until I use any embryos that come out of a cycle that I pay for out of pocket? Because that should have no bearing on my health insurance because you didn't pay for this one. Mm-hmm. So, and again, I, I'm not disagreeing with you, but I don't make that determination. You know, that's United Healthcare. Well, somebody should be able to give me an answer on whether that has any bearing or not. And the question I have is, who? Well, again, if they do request your records like they did last time, and it shows that you have embryos, then they, because based on the clinical guidelines, then it would be my assumption that they would deny it, another retrieval. Well, I'm sure they would. But yeah, um, I, I guess the question I have is, am I legally within my right to withhold any information from something I paid for? Oh, I'm not going to get any answers from them. I'm not going to get any answers from them. I don't. I'm not. They can't see anything past my summary. They can't even see my certificate of coverage. So there's no point in making that phone call. I've been around that. Been around that merry-go-round. Our program is a clinical program, and so you know, our my my role here for you is to help you through the clinical pieces. But because I can see your benefit information I'm absolutely happy happy to help you you know kind of walk through that but some of this is definitely kind of out of what I do but who I, I but who else can incorrect. who else can but, see what you can see because the people I talk to on the phone can't even see what you can see 
as far as my benefits. They're not looking at their certificate of coverage. They they tell me outright they can't see anything more than my summary sheet. Uh, That's what I've been told outright by at least three different people I've talked to on the phone. So, and even when my doctor's office calls, they're getting the same information based on summary sheet, not actual certificate of coverage. I mean, the doctor's office is calling and is being told I don't have coverage, which is not true. So now I have to fight with them and I have to fight with the doctor's office to submit a ref- to submit an authorization that they have to put a lot of work into when they've been told I don't even have coverage. So now I got to fight well, with them and just submit it anyway. No, no. I mean, that is quick, but they ask for so much information oh, after that. Information. Right. So they don't want to do all of that work if they already know I don't have coverage. They're calling to verify if it's even worth going through all of that. Oh, I see. You see, so now I got to fuss with them to submit it anyway, because whoever you're talking to on the phone has no idea what they're talking about. This is the frustration that I've been going through for the last year. <laughs> so, it just, just never seems to be a straight answer. Yeah, but who, who, but who can give me the right answer if I can't call the 800 number and get an appropriate answer from whoever's getting me on the phone and all they do is refer me to the nurse case manager. Prior authorization, they have requested clinical information. Okay, so that piece we know. So oh, this document they gave me, I'm sorry. We're going to go ahead with another egg retrieval. The doctor's office submits your clinical information. It identifies that you have embryos. A retrieval would be denied. That's what I'm see- That's what I would understand from what I'm seeing. So let's just, you know what, at this point, I'm going to be hopeful for you that there's, you know, a good number of normal embryos and, you know, hopefully you may have, you know, three normal embryos and you can move forward with the transfer and and hopefully have successful pregnancy and kind of put this behind you. It would be nice. (laughs) That's my hope for you. Um, I I still want to see this guideline. (laughs) I need print. You see what I'm saying? (laughs) I did ask. Uh, I need print, and I want to see if this guideline refers to age at all, because it doesn't help me age-wise to be forced into a pregnancy and have to wait to retrieve younger to retrieve eggs again. Right, I'm asking somebody else about. So if they're if they're going based on that, then. Let's talk about a guideline based on a woman's age. Did they even read the whole thing? Clinical guideline, but it's usually under forty-four. So you're far from that. Under forty-four, and I mean it's under forty-four about whether they'll pay for a retrieval with my own eggs. But if you're forcing me into, I have one embryo, and you're forcing me into this embryo, and I get pregnant, now I can't have another kid. Or I might not be able to have another kid because I have to wait at least another year to do another retrieval and my eggs are that much older now. Right. Or with this cycle, you have successful more embryos to freeze would be the hope. Well, regardless of this cycle, you see what I'm saying? Regardless, let's say this cycle never even happened. Mm -hmm. According to this guideline, I'm forced to do a transfer with my one single embryo at the risk of not being able to have any more children. I, I totally empathize with that. You know, the clinical guidelines are, you know, what they follow, so. Well, I know, but now I want to know, do the clini- does the clinical oh, guideline sure. take, a, take the, age into yeah. a, uh, take age into. I just got back from my, my, my um, manager just got back to me. You can have access via the Optum Health website under the fertility section, let's see, you do not need a login. She gave me an actual, um, I'm going to copy the, I'm going to send the link to you. And you can look up the clinical guidelines. All right, let's see. Yeah, 
it's it's a public website. You can look it up. So let me email it to you. And your email address, I want to confirm, is, oh, there All right, so let me email this to you right now. And what I sent you is what the physicians also have access to. Oh, by the way, this uh, certificate of coverage I'm looking at is dated July 2015. So if okay, there's a I newer know. one, I, I don't know. Can you send me? I don't know if I can do that. Because this is the one I got from HR. So it's... Yeah, it's no, I, that's a weird one. They gave you a 2015 one? It what? says July 1st, 2015. That's what they gave me. Yeah, so I would definitely just ask them for another one. I, don't ha I can't do that, but this system won't let me. Um, but I would ask them for another one. But, it, but like what I said, I think your actual coverage has in increased from what we looked at from the 2017 to 2000. Well, I don't know what 2017 looks like. I know the 2015 one just, it doesn't mention a limit at all. So. Okay, so I sent you the guidelines. Hopefully that's going to help. And, you know, actually I'm going to. I can look on the guideline myself so I can tell you where to look. I pull it up. What else did she say? She said it doesn't need... You can have access on the Optum Health website under the fertility section. You, they do not need to log in, and it's a public website. Okay. All right, so let me know if you have any issues with that. And then the, infer the really good piece to that is that, you know, your physician group has access to that. Are you looking at it? I don't, I didn't get your email yet. The, they oh, have okay. like these spam filters that take a while. Oh, uh, okay. To come through. All right, well let me know once you look at that. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate and you know, I'll help you if I can. Okay. All right. You take care, Tamika. I'm gonna try. <laughs> All right, take care, bye-bye. All righty. So there you have it. There's nobody in insurance who can answer an insur a true insurance benefit question. Because she can't even tell me who to talk to. Oh, well, if you call customer service, customer service don't know Jack. Okay? I've been dealing with customer service for over a year now, and they don't know Jack. They lie to me. They lie to my doctor's office. So who other than them, since you are clinical... And now on the business side of things can answer these questions. Nobody? That's what I thought. They're all making it up as they go along. And this is like incredibly pissing me off. And I'm going to tell you what. If I have to do another retrieval, you best be damn skippy. Everything about this retrieval will be redacted from my records. My doctor's office, there will be a note in there that says that they are not allowed to di to distribute any information regarding this particular cycle that I paid out of my pocket for. Nothing. So as far as they're concerned, they don't know how many embryos I got. It's none of your business because you didn't pay for it and that's where I'm going with that. And so when I get this get a hold of this here guideline, I'm going to go through it with a fine tooth comb to make sure that it doesn't mention anything about age um, or anything like that. And regarding to you must use frozen embryos before you can do a fresh transfer. Plenty of people bank. You know what I'm saying? But I guess those are the self pay people who bank. But it just doesn't make any sense when I'm just getting older. 
to force me into a transfer. Doesn't make any sense. So, oh, well, did you do the retrieval? I sure did because I was between a rock and a hard place. Oh, well, you don't know how many blasts. No, I don't. No, I don't. And I'm damn sure not going to share it with you if I have to pay out of pocket for this particular cycle because no decision that you make regarding what you're going to pay for should have anything to do with what I pay for. You dig? You dig. <sighs> I'm pissed. I'm going to go back to work, though. Shh. <sighs>